With the release of the new Blood Angels Codex, we have been given a few new successor chapters, so I thought that I would celebrate this fact with another successor conversion. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to convert members of the Cruel Blades. The basis of this conversion was the standard Primaris Intercessor, but the conversion I'm using here can be added to pretty much any Primaris Space Marine. Now I began by removing the basic components required to build an Intercessor from the sprue before cleaning up any mold lines and remaining sprue tabs. With this done, I could begin assembling the torso and legs. However, for the time being, I decided to keep the lower leg armor separate, just for now. Now, we don't have too much information about the crew or blades, beyond their color scheme, chapter badge, and a single paragraph of information. So, creating a theme for these new successor chapters often involves embellishing certain details and reading between the lines a little bit. The first of these was based on two aspects of the Cruel Blades that have already been revealed to us. First of all, the Cruel Blades were unable to heed the Call of Aid during the Siege of Baal, and so they carry a great guilt, something that they wish to atone for. As such, they have spent the self-imposed penitence purging the Red Scar of tyrannic threats. From this, I imagine that the Cruel Blades would be particularly dauntless in their pursuit of redemption. This would be reflected in numerous battle scars across their armor, with each of these serving as a mark of personal penance. To apply these marks, I began by using my saw to carefully make small indentations into the armor. I applied only a small amount of pressure here until I had cut out a small groove. With this done, I could begin applying more pressure with the small groove helping to prevent the sword from slipping. Keeping these sections of armor separate for this task also helped to make things much easier as I was able to localize the damage to just this plate. I applied three parallel cuts to mimic the damage that would be caused by a rending clawed armed tyranid such as a gene stealer. With the cuts finished with the saw, I could bring in my scalpel. This was used to widen the cuts by scraping flat the bottom edge. This would create the appearance that they've been slashed by a claw rather than a uniformly sized blade. In addition to the lower leg, I continue to make these cuts to other areas of the model, going quite heavy on the battle damage. Where you apply these cuts yourself is entirely up to you, but personally, I opted to add them to the gorget and the right knee pad, following the same steps and processes as before. With these cuts made and completed, I could then finish assembling the legs. The symbol of the Cruel Blades is a blood drop on two crossed blades. Now, while I could have simply used a blank shoulder pad here and freehanded the entire logo, I instead opted to use one of the Blood Angel specific shoulder pads. This was taken from the Blood Angels upgrade sprue, but these can be found in a few different Blood Angel kits. As I wanted cross blades behind the blood drop instead of the wings, these would need to be removed. I started off by using my knife to very carefully trim away small amounts of the wings, being especially careful here to avoid damaging the blood drop or my fingers. Once the bulk of the wings had been removed, I then used the knife to help smooth out and round out the shoulder pad once again. This was achieved by holding the blade perpendicular against the surface and using it to scrape flat the plastic. Once I had removed the wings, before I set about attaching this to anything, I decided to add some battle damage here as well. This was done in the exact same way as I already had done, using my saw to create the initial cuts before switching to my knife to help widen them out. Now, while my crew or blade Space Marine already had a good amount of battle damage across their armor, I found that their gung-ho attitude could be expressed even further. While their guilt would surely push these Blood Angel successors into the deepest of the fighting, they were still Space Marines and so would return from the fray in one piece. Well, mostly at least. To represent this, I decided to raid the Iron Hands upgrade sprue to borrow some bionic components. Now unlike the Iron Hands, who deem Flash to be weak and so will replace perfectly good body parts with mechanical ones, the Cruel Blade's commonplace augmentations are as a result of the necessity to keep on fighting no matter how badly wounded they are. As the Crew or Blade's color scheme features a silver torso and legs with wine red arms and helmet, I wanted to keep the arms separate to make painting them much easier. This meant that before I could glue the modified Blood Angel shoulder pad to the bionic arm, I needed to make sure that wire I glued it to wouldn't get in the way when I came to actually attach the arm to the torso. Therefore, I did a dry run holding the arm in place before gluing the shoulder pad to the arm. 
This meant that I would be able to make sure that the pad would be fixed into a position that wouldn't prevent me from properly gluing the arm once I had finished painting it. For the right arm, I didn't do anything special other than using one of the arms that carried a bolter one-handed in order to match the pointing left arm. After attaching the magazine to the bolter, I then attached a regular shoulder pad in the same way as I did before. Now, you may be wondering how I intend to paint these arms away from the rest of the model without getting my fingers all over the paintwork. Now, normally to do this, I start by drilling a hole into the component. I do this in places that will be covered up once the model had been assembled. In the case of these arms, the shoulder contact points are the best places to drill and I use my pin vise to drill just a few millimeters into the plastic. Once I had my hole, I could attach some wire into it. I use one millimeter thick steel florist wire because it's cheap and easily pliable. This is then super glued into the drilled hole before being cut to length. Finally, I bend around the end of the wire to create a very simple and rudimentary handle. Once I'm finished painting, these can be easily removed by twisting around the wire. With the arms selected and prepped, the next step was to choose a relevant head. Again, I wanted something that featured Bionics in some way, which gave me plenty of options from various Space Marine kits, both old and new. Ultimately, I settled on the bare head from the Halblasters kit. The Bionic effects are a little more subtle on this particular head, and the positioning of the scarred skin would work nicely with the damaged left side of the armor and the Bionic left arm. However, much like the arms, I opted to keep this separate for painting, so I didn't glue it into place just yet. Next up was the Power Pack. This didn't have any modifications and was just taken straight from the Intercessor kit. However, I did actually glue this component to the torso, due to it sharing the same armor color as both the torso and the legs. I would also be attaching the spare helmet from the Intercessor kit, but again, due to this having the wine red color, it would be painted separately and so wasn't glued just yet. When it comes to Space Marine chapters, if the name has a weapon in it, then you can be guaranteed that I will include that weapon on the model somehow. The Cruel Blades were no exception. I didn't want to go down the whole route of using swords here, as it would be difficult to recreate this theme across an entire army. Instead, I chose to use the paired knives from the Primaris Incursors kit. These fit nicely onto the thighs of the Space Marine and satisfy the blades part of the chapter's name. The final step in building this model was another fairly simple addition. I opted to add slightly more purity seals to this model than what would normally be found on a typical intercessor. My reasoning behind this lay with the chapter's guilt. In addition to this driving them to repent their failings, I felt that they would wish to reaffirm their sanctity, and so would be adorned with these extra seals. These components can be found in a whole host of Space Marine kits and can be glued to wherever you see fit on the model. With the purity seals added, the only remaining step was to paint, assemble, and base the miniature, which left me with this. And here we have the finished member of the Cruel Blades. As per their color scheme in the Blood Angels Codex, I painted the legs, torso, and backpack in silver, whilst painting the arms and the helmet in that wine red color. To help further emphasize the chapter's involvement in fighting Tyranids, the base was built to appear as though the Marine was standing on a world that was steadily being taken over by a high fleet. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this model turned out. It was a simpler than maybe some of my other conversions, but this should mean that the effect is much easier to reproduce across a larger force. And so the final thing to say is a massive thank you to all of my supporters. Whether you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliate links, your continued help is what keeps this channel alive and is what allows me to build these conversions for you. If you would like to help me out, then you can check out my description and please do subscribe and leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.